Hey guys, it's time to be liberated from the chaos of working in your business. It's Scott Beebe, the Business on Purpose platform, and we are going to talk today about vision, mission, values, systems, processes. So let's go. Welcome to the Business Leadership Series, where we engage with leaders who are making an impact on their worlds and who want to share their knowledge and experience for your personal and professional growth. The following interview is designed to inspire you to become the best leader you can be. Your host, Derek Champagne, is the founder and CEO of The Artist Evolution, a full-service agency building successful brands, marketing tools, and campaigns, and also the author of the best-selling book, Don't Buy a Duck. And now, let's begin today's Leadership Series interview. Welcome to the Business Leadership Series, where our goal is to inspire you to become the best leader that you can be. That familiar voice you heard at the beginning is none other than Scott Beebe, founder and head coach of MyBusinessOnPurpose.com, host of the Business on Purpose podcast, and he's been a guest with us. It's been two years. Scott, welcome back. Derek, I am so excited to be back together. I I love what you're building, what you do, and the fact that you would share it with us is a real, real honor. So thank you. Well, I can't believe it's been two years. And before we before we get started in, I got to tell you, and I told you this when I saw you in Nashville the last time I saw you, uh, is you, I had you on as a guest, and then you introduced me to uh, another guest named Aaron Walker. And then uh, the past two years, I've been in that mastermind and doing things with with, with it was just it was just a whole roller coaster. And I started putting the pieces together and thought, you know, I don't know if I ever told Scott that. So I told you last time I saw you, and you said I did. Yeah, <laughs> you do remember that, but I got to thank you for that because it, it I had been prayerfully looking for a way to be out of isolation as I was growing my company, doing all these things like many guys that come into that group, and and uh, that was just the right timing for me. So all the way around, it was just awesome how it happened. So Derek, that. that's the podcast episode right there. I mean, we could wrap it after that statement right there to say, <laughs> "Get me out of isolation," right. because man, you know, we talk in our world about chaos all the time. Is that you know, the heroes that we get to work with are living in chaos. But Derek, a lot of times they are. We just had lunch today with two heroic small business owner. One guy who has really bought into implementation about nine months ago on a certain thing. Actually, Jesse Cole, we were talking about him offline. Yeah. He heard Jesse speak at a local event that we put on and decided, I'm going all in. This is a $19 million home building company, 15 employees, and they went all in. And now their vendors are starting to set up lunches with him to say, how are you doing? Like, what's the magic? And he's like, really hard work and repetition, but he's not in isolation. And so mm. what you said it from the outset, I mean, that's, you could do a whole series just on that idea. That's awesome. We had Jesse Cole recently on the podcast. In fact, a couple of weeks ago, it was great. He's going to be on our ESPN radio show version in a few weeks. Uh, we'll run yours in a few <laughs> weeks that way too. Uh, you you help small business owners, you liberate them from the chaos of working in their business and help them get their lives back by articulating and implementing intentional vision, mission, value systems and processes. Tell me a little bit about that. Okay. The, the short of it, the distilled version is heroic small business owners are in chaos. A couple key phrases, Derek, we hear. I mean, you're a marketing guy. You get this. What we hear all the time is I feel like I'm throwing Hail Marys every day. I'm being pulled in 17 different directions. I'm constantly putting out fires. And so we hear that all the time. Uh, Just prior to you and I getting on, uh, we had a call with a group of architects from around the world. And then just prior to that, I had a guy who's in the roofing business here locally. Man, he was almost in tears because things are going on in his business with his dad that's a real, real struggle right now, real struggle right now. And so that chaos is something that a lot of small business owners, um, you know, they really wrestle with and they're, they're living in, they're swimming in and not only professionally, but even personally. And a lot of times there's crossover in that. And so the vision, mission, value systems process part of that comes in, in that uh, Derek, I, I think there are a lot of folks that, and we're all wired this way. You know, we want kind of the unicorn to fly and everything to smooth out. <laughs> And so when chaos ensues, we're like, where's the unicorn? <laughs> and the unicorn's <laughs> screaming from the side of the room going, I'm not real. And so uh, not to burst anybody's bubble, but the reality is, is when you sit and write down, Ray Dalio, this book principle, so powerful, first 80 pages. It's, a, it's, a, it's an investment, by the way. If you decide to read that book, it's an investment <laughs> of right. time. But the first 80 pages, I bet he uses the phrase, write it down or written down or we wrote it down. 20 times within 80 pages. And that's the hard work. Seth Godin writing on a blog for 15 years, seven days a week. That's the hard work 
of being able to put things down where other people can get access to them because only then can they help march you out of the chaos that small business owners are experiencing every day. I think word chaos, again, we, we both work with small businesses in different ways. And I don't know of a business, and I've been doing this for many, almost 20 years in the marketing in some way or another. I don't know yeah. any business, any small business that doesn't have some la- level of chaos before they work with you, obviously, and or <laughs> or that that don't that that don't get bogged down by some of the things they wish they didn't have to do, or are, are not always surprised by. I got into this business to do this, and instead I'm stuck doing this all the time. That's why I love talking to you about these things. We help them from a marketing side, but we don't do this other side of things. And, and so keep going. Let's profile for me what a person's dealing with, maybe. And then yeah. some of the kinds of things that you do, but let, let's profile that, that avatar of somebody that, and what they might be struggling with. So setting the context, Derek, based on what you just said, cause some people were going, wait a second, Derek, you said that we work with people on this side of it and Scott works with people on the other side of it. Essentially, when you look at any given thing, let's look at a house uh, or a car, let's take a car. And when you look at that car, there's the whole car. But then there's the wheels of the car. And so you've got mechanics that just specialize on the wheels, the rims, the suspension, et cetera. Then there's the engine of the car, the powertrain. So you've got mechanics who just specialize in the powertrain of the car. Then you've got other mechanics who just specialize in the auto body of the car. And so essentially, there are various systems in any given business, just like there are in the human body. We've got 11 systems that make up our human body, skeletal, cardiovascular, et cetera. I'm not going to act like I know what they all are, but I know those two. And so- What Derek is saying is that we work on that marketing system and man, we're specialists. We're like an orthopedic is to bones. We know that system inside and out. What we are is we're your family doctor. We kind of know a a good bit about all of it. And we're not so interested in in creating a finely tuned marketing uh, um, uh, result. What we're interested in is setting you up to create a process mindset so that when you get to marketing, that you can create a a world-class process in marketing. And then Derek and and your team, you can come in and bring just game-changing strategies to an inlaid foundational process. And so what we do in terms of helping people get out of that chaos is say, okay, let's go all the way back to vision. People say, where do I start? Easy vision. And then Derek, what they do is they roll their eyes and go, oh, okay, I'm going to go to dinner. No, 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 no. Stay with me. Stay with me. It really is. And vision is not a novelty. It's not Peter Drucker, Jim Collins, Harvard Business. It's not any of that. Vision is age old. And so if you go back to antiquity, in fact, depending on your faith background, the faith conviction I hold is that this earth was created. So there was formless and void. And God took that formlessness and void and created something now that we see. And so when I look out the back window of where I'm standing right now, what I see is gorgeous. I've got 300 year old live oak trees in my backyard. And then my backyard kind of eventually dribbles into the ocean because we're on this little tidal Creek. It is gorgeous. And all I see when I look out here, this is why I love this picture window is I see systems and processes. I see the sun come up over there. I see the sun go down over there. I see the tide come in eight feet. I see the tide go out eight feet every six and a half hours. It does that. Hmm. And so I'm sitting here watching these processes, but it all started with a vision. And so when when a heroic small business owner is in chaos, the very first step is not to have a come to Jesus meeting with your team, uh, which we're so good at doing. It's not going out and hiring the next, you know, kind of magic bullet. It's not, you know, taking six grand and putting it up on a Facebook ad. It's not any of that. (laughs) You got to step back. I'm sure you see that, Derek, all the time. Well, if we just applied 20 grand to Facebook ads, no, (laughs) stop, back up. Right. Got to set the vision because the proverb is true. Where there is no vision, people scatter. And if you're feeling scattered, please don't take offense. But if you're feeling scattered, it's because you don't know where you're going. Yeah, that's great. And, And to your point, in our particular line of work, if those things haven't been figured out, it makes it challenging for us to come in and build oh, and build our marketing system because there's so many other dysfunctions and chaos that it's it's not functioning healthily. So they're going straight to the specialist in one area, but not addressing the whole problem as you, you relate to the family doctor or our holistic doctor. Mm-hmm. So that, that's a great point. Uh, hey, talk to me about 
some ideas or some ways of systematizing and processing your business. Because I tell you, I'm a self-proclaimed visionary for my company. Mm. And, uh, and I love that part. And I had a partner at one point in time and a consultant who said he loved to call audibles. And I love it as well. <laughs> right. But when it comes down to actually building systems and processes outside of marketing, I want to run. I don't want to do yeah. it. I don't want to do it. I, I, my mind doesn't, I'm not quite wired that way, even for my own company. So T- tell me when someone has my mindset, what do we do? How do we build a system and process? It seems daunting. Yeah. So Derek, thank you for sh- being candid and sharing that. And so let me be candid in response as well. Yes. You don't have a choice. Hmm. Um, the responsibility, the privilege of a business owner is everything that everybody thinks being a business owner is. So when we, you know, when we see you metaphorically driving down the road in your work van with your name on the side of it, what's our response? Collectively, it's, oh man, Derek's crushing it. He's right. killing it. Right. And yet you and I look in the back and go, ooh, no, he's not. He's not anywhere close. Mm-hmm. And so uh, business owners know what I'm talking about. A lot of times, and no offense to employees, but a lot of times employees don't quite understand or get the weight of that is probably a better way to put it right. because they don't, all they see is top line revenue, or they might even see the, the margin numbers that their bonus is incentivized off of or something like that. But the reality is, as a small business owner, it's not just a privilege to, quote, do whatever I want to do, even though that's not true either. Right. It is a deep responsibility because there are people, not just employees, but stakeholders in your business who are dependent on you making wise decision and wisdom comes from vision. I've got a, a dear mentor of mine who says, Scott, walk in wisdom and peace will flourish. Mm -hmm. Walk in wisdom and peace will flourish. He just told me that about two months ago, and I've probably said it a thousand times already. And if you as a business owner want peace to flourish and the business to grow, you don't have a choice. Vision is awesome, and it's necessary. In fact, it's number one for me. It is absolutely number one. And then it's got to make a quick transition to process. Why? Well, because only in the midst of process can things be repeatable. Why is repetition important? Because as Skip Clarkson, my first ever Pfizer manager, used to tell me all the time, repetition is the mother of all learning. Repetition is the mother of all learning. He would say it three times, every time, (laughs) obviously. And so, Derek, in your world, in my world as small business owners, if we're not repeating things, mundane things too, Step one, turn on the computer. Step two, open this piece of software. If we're not repeating those over and over and over again, they'll get done. They just won't get done the way you want them to get done, and they won't get done the way that the customer anticipates they need to be done. And the consistency on the customer end is what is so crucial in this. So if I have a, pro- if I don't have a process, but I've got a great idea, and so in one case, Derek, you come to me, and let's say you refer me business, and I send you a, a $100 gift card to a steakhouse. And then you go out to a friend, you go, oh my gosh, I referred Scott Business, he gave me a $100 gift card to a steakhouse. And then your friend refers me business, and I give him a $100 gift card to a shoe store. All of a sudden, he's disappointed, not because he doesn't like or need shoes, it's because his expectation was not met, right. because I didn't have a process in place that delivered consistency. And so being able to take and translate vision into process is crucial. So let me stop there. I want to get into some details on the process stuff here in just a second, but I want to stop and see if you've got any questions around that. You know, uh, first of all, to be duplicatable, I see sometimes that small business owners have a hard time letting go, right? So they have a hard time letting go to even know because Mm -hmm. they want it done right. Do you have a process or recommendations for that as well? I see so many small business owners that that have their growth hindered because they will not delegate. Yes. All right. So the very first thing that we do when somebody is in desperate need of delegation was actually have something called the delegation roadmap. It's simple. You can make it yourself. Hmm. It's a sheet of paper that has a bunch of lines on it. And what we ask you to do is for 30 to 60 minutes to sit down without distraction. That means turning the phone on airplane mode, turning everything off, getting in a room by yourself. And you write down everything that you do in a typical week. Well, Scott, even taking out the trash? Yes. Taking out the trash, making bank runs, uh, checking Facebook, scrolling some video game, whatever. Whatever it is that you do, sales calls, team meetings, write it down, put a, a, a time figure to it. I want to know, and be honest, I want to know exactly how much time you spend on that. Now, if you're a business owner, just so you know, your time is worth on average between $200 and $1,000 an hour. 
oh, Scott, but we're a professional services firm. We only bill out $110. No, 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 no. As an owner, your time is worth $200 to $1,000 an hour. So every minute that you spend taking the trash out is costing you as a business owner about four bucks a minute to take the trash out. Every hour that you take to run your checks to the bank is costing you at least $200 to do that. So take whatever deposit you put in, subtract $200. That's what it should feel like to you. And so we have you write that down and then just pick one. So let's take, Frank, well, I'm gonna put you on the spot, Derek. What's one thing right now, Kim, and everybody else is looking at you going, God, Derek could only (laughs) delegate this. What would that be? What do you need to get off your plate? Mm, that's a great question. I have delegated quite a bit, to be honest with you. But I would say maybe some of the mo- some of the morning huddles. Okay. Just me getting oh, that's brilliant. Huddles. Okay. So let's delegate the morning huddle. And so in the morning huddle, which by the way, kudos for having one. It's crucial. Daily huddles are crucial, including the weekly team meeting. In the morning huddle, essentially, if I catapulted into your morning huddle and had a, a notepad with me, I would listen to kind of the outline of everything you did. You know, you're always going to start your huddle this way. You're going to talk about these issues. You're going to follow this uh, plan and protocol. You're going to finish out with X and you're going to be done by a certain time. I would write down every step of that morning huddle happens these days at this time for this duration. Here's the agenda, step one, two, three, and four. And so before you delegate that, you sit down with the person you're going to delegate it to with that written sheet of paper or a Google doc and you go through it and you say, all right, this is how we want to run a daily huddle. Now, let me ask you, do you have any suggestions of things that you could add to make this your own? Yes or no. Okay, great. So I want you to walk me back through the daily huddle. This is all in the same sitting. I want you to walk me back through the daily huddle that's on this Google Doc right here. So they walk you back through. Great. For this week, I'm still going to run the daily huddles, but I want you to observe. For the next week, uh, I want you to run the daily huddles. And what we'll do is each day after the huddle, you and I are going to debrief for three minutes. And we're just going to go back through this agenda on this sheet of paper. And you're going to do that for a couple of weeks. And then after that, you're going to follow up with the daily huddles during your weekly meeting because you're going to back yourself out of that. Mm. And so in the weekly meetings, now you're getting accountability updates. How's the huddle going? How's the huddle going? How's the huddle going? Remember, repetition is the mother of all learning. Mm. Until you get to a point where that thing flies. Now, just because it takes off, Derek, doesn't mean that the process is out the window. Next month, you want to pull that process back up at the end of a team meeting and just say, hey, guys, just to review, remember, this is our daily huddle agenda. Are we good? Everybody on track? Any suggestions to add? No? Okay, great. Let's move on. Hmm. It's great. exhausting, isn't it? Yeah, wow. Wow. That's, I love I love that though. I love the I love the idea of that kind of delegation that that frees up time and you're talking about how much the time is worth. Yeah. Being a business owner, Derek, doesn't mean we don't work. It just means we work differently. Right. And we we have to work on our business. We have, we have to. to. Nobody else is going to do it. You have to do it. Yeah. It's yeah. not just going to it's not just going to coast on, on and, and go on cruise control and if it does, it won't happen like that forever. It won't last. No. It won't last. Hey, we've got a few more minutes, Scott. I want to talk to you. Talk to me about some of the steps in in business freedom. You talk about business freedom often and liberation. Tell me about that. Yeah. So we've got kind of four major steps that we follow. The first is always going to be your vision, mission, values. Starting there, I won't go into great detail on those, but if you go to mybusinessonpurpose.com forward slash vision, we actually have unlocked our entire video tutorial, our entire template that you can copy. It's totally uh, free for you to use. And then uh, all we ask is if you're willing to invest two to three hours of time, that's what you need to do, 20 minutes for the tutorial, and then another hour and a half to two hours to actually sit down and write it out. Uh, It'll be one of the greatest investments you can make in your business and your life, by the way. And so your vision, your mission, your values, that's the first place you got to start. From there, we move into the organizational infrastructure. We've got to build that infrastructure in place. I'm talking about the good old-fashioned stuff like org charts, job role charts, master processes, roadmaps. We've actually got a dental clinic. Derek, you'll love this. We've got a dental clinic. Every process in their clinic is on one sheet of paper in a box. Wow. And when you click that box on the Google Doc, it takes you to a drawn-out uh, process for like teeth whitening. I can tell you how to whiten teeth. I can see it right there. Like it's, it's in the box. And when I click the box, it takes me to the process. 
that's the kind of granular detail that we've got to get to with that, with the organizational structure. Then what we do is we move into the process build out. So we take all the org structures. We know what roles exist. We know what systems exist in the business. And now we're going to create the individual processes, how to whiten teeth, how to do social media marketing within our company, how to do blog posts, how to do whatever, whatever they are. Then finally, it's the implementation accountability. That's where we take the team meeting process, your non-negotiable weekly schedule process, and man, we we implement relentlessly over and over and over again. And we meet uh, this week, and we meet next week, and we meet the following week, and we meet the following week. Derek, the biggest challenge is not writing out the vision. It's not writing out the processes. It's not creating the 12-week plans. The biggest challenge is showing back up on Tuesday and reviewing it again. And showing back on Wednesday and reviewing it again, because we get all amped up when we write it on Monday and then we just go back into auto mode on Tuesday Mm. instead of saying, hey, we're going to do something different. And that lunch I told you about earlier was one entrepreneur sitting across the table from the other entrepreneur and the other entrepreneur is trying to come up with new strategy and idea. And finally, the, 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 the one who's been doing this for nine months said, hey, there's no magic. Write it one time, show up and do it over and over. His word was rinse and repeat. That's that. I mean, that, that applies so much to our business too. We see it so often in the clients we work with is creativity and strategy are great, but without proper implementation and consistency and execution, there's, you don't get the results. That's right. And the four steps behind this, the, the principal things we're talking about, vision, mission, value systems, processes, those are principles. You could run a business in the 1700s. You can run a business in Asia in the 2100s. The principles hold. Vision will always hold. Mission, values, systems, process will always hold. But the strategy, how, how Derek, you guys are going to lead small businesses to market 10 years from now is going to be uh, like today's going to be archaic compared to what it is right. 10 years from now. That strategy, that will always change, which is great for you. It means you always have, you'll always right. have work. <laughs> Please keep changing. Yes. <laughs> That's right. Uh, so thank you for that offer. Mybusinessonpurpose.com forward slash vision uh, for the, for that free offer from you. Uh, Scott, is there anything else you want to share with us? And then I, I want to ask you uh, a couple of questions before you go as well. Yeah, man. No, the biggest thing, you know, sometimes we'll get asked the question, hey, where do we start? Start with vision. Mm-hmm. Just, just please start with vision. Trust me. Once you've got a, a clear uh, picture of the destination of where you're going, Everything else doesn't become easier. Everything else becomes clearer at that point. Mm-hmm. And so, you you know, Derek, we were just at uh, Social Media Marketing World uh, a while back. And when you're walking through, man, everything's shiny and new. Those booths, oh my gosh, there's this piece of technology and mm-hmm. that new spreadsheet that I could buy. And, and you just want to buy it all. Right. And sometimes my team gets frustrated because I go in there and they go, hey, what about this? It's a special conference deal. <laughs> and I'm like, guys, you know the rule. It's going to go on our next 12-week plan. And from today, that's coming up in six weeks. So we'll put it under our future section to review, but I'm not even going to sniff it until yeah. our next 12-week plan. Right. I love that. Love that. I follow that same principle. It's, it's, it's great. We do that with our clients as well. There's, there's so many new shiny objects that come out. And we just say, <laughs> let's commit to this plan because it's good. And if we commit to that, then w- that's right. The next 12 weeks. Love that. Uh, hey, I've got to ask you real quick. I saw, I saw a, a, a thing that you did in Nashville and, uh, it was it, it floored everybody, and I've seen a lot of things, so I wasn't necessarily expecting to be floored. But you did this punch fear in the mouth, mm, and uh, yeah. can you t- and uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? And, and I want to share a link, but I, I think it's actually punchfearinthemouth dot com. Is that correct? I th- yeah, that's yeah, it. Okay. That's it. We actually literally just kind of put a URL to it, and um, you know, Derek, uh, the ISI that you and I are both a part of is just it's been a game changer. You talked about. Men, men tend to live in isolation. You know, I think it was Thoreau, maybe it was him, maybe it wasn't, who said um, most men uh, live life of quiet desperation, yeah. uh, still with their song inside of them. And you could add to that, most men live life of quiet isolation as well. And the ISI that we're part of, Aaron was kind enough to ask me to uh, to present. And uh, he asked me to present on fear because he's coached me for three years now. And he knows that that is a, uh, that is a, a near companion for me, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I decided to just kind of be real candid with our guys in the ISI and laid it out. And there are a couple of things that I'm still, to this day, uh, this is not mastered. This is something that I'm still working through. But a couple of elements that have really, they've really been of value to me to start to punch fear in the mouth. I've not, it's not on the ground yet. It's not a 10 count, 
but I am actively trying to punch it in the mouth. My, my fists are bloody mm. because of it. And, and one of those is what I call the cords of community and being around. That's what ISI provides you and I, right. and uh, is that, is that community. Um, but one of the others is the wisdom of a mentor is mm. the wisdom of a guy literally who's chronologically older than you, uh, who's got who's way beyond you, both in uh, family life, business, experience, those sorts of things. That's what Aaron is to, to both you and I. Yeah. Uh, and I've got a couple other guys in my life like that, but surrounding myself with that. And then I've also got a real near group of two guys. In fact, we just met this morning, we meet every Thursday morning, seven, seven fifteen. And honestly, it's not a Bible study. It's not a discussion group. It's not a book group. It's none of that. It's it's us three getting together and just pull oh, everything right there on the mm. table. And, um, man, it gets uncomfortable sometimes, <laughs> really uncomfortable. But I, Derek, I wouldn't be able to punch fear in the mouth at all if I didn't have those things. And if I lived in that kind of isolation, and I, I think that's a real burden for me. I know it is for you when we come yeah. across heroic small business owners, man, they're trying to wear the cape. Uh, but it's just isolation and they are swimming, swimming in anxiety. Uh, I know how that feels. I yeah. periodically I'm in the pool. I was just in the pool this past weekend of anxiety and, uh, and still have to come out of that. So yeah, if that can encourage anybody punch fear in the mouth.com, it's just a, there's, there's nothing on, I mean, it's literally a, a video talk. I, I, um, I strongly, even the way it's presented is just awesome. I mean, I, I want to encourage our, our listeners to go and check that out, punch fear in the mouth.com, but also, uh, also to go to my business on purpose.com. Scott, give us a kind of give us some insight. If somebody's curious about learning more, what, what can they expect or what, what should they do next? If they're curious about doing some work with you, uh, because I know the great things that you're helping with a lot of businesses that I know uh, to. Get yeah. Them. Wow. Thank you, Derek. Uh, I, I told you earlier, it's a lot of work to build a podcast and we're totally humbled that you would share the platform with us. So thank you for that. And then um, for us, my business on purpose.com forward slash vision. We've also got the business on purpose podcast. Uh, we've been uploading five episodes a week. They're really short, about four to eight minutes each. And uh, they're very relevant because I literally come out of a conference room or off of a video call. I turn on my podcast app on my phone. They're not the best produced you've ever heard. You're going to hear background noise and all that. But it is literally me recounting what I just talked with a small business owner about. So you're getting live coaching uh, right now, five days a week uh, in little four to eight minute segments. So that's probably the best way um, just to kind of be fed from this. But if you're ready to put action to it, we, we don't require any money. We require time because we want to see if you're invested in this. Uh, go to mybusinessonpurpose.com forward slash vision. And then you said, what can people expect? Derek, quite honestly, if they want to work with us and give us the opportunity to work with them, they can expect to work their rear end off. It's yes. uphill. Your thighs are going to burn. You're going to sweat and breathe heavy. That's awesome. But you know what? The, the, the hardworking business owner or, or person that's going to do that wants to work hard. They're just not sure what to do. That's and right. So, so give give direction and man, done. The, the, your, your target is going to jump on. Yeah, that, we'll so. take them by the hand. We'll show. We've got a whole dashboard. Walks you step by step. We call it dummy proof. It nice. walks you step by step. You'll have everything you need if there's two conditions. We laugh. I'll go ahead and out <laughs> these. But in our time when we're kind of vetting and really working through stuff, we got two conditions. Number one, you have to do everything we say within the first 90 days. I mean, you just got to you just got to follow our lead with this in order to get you out of the chaos. And number two, it's crazy, but you got to have more money coming in than's going out, or else we can't make you profitable. <laughs> That's, those are reasonable. Both of them are. Scott Beebe, thank you again. Uh, you've got my business on purpose.com forward slash vision. And thank you so much for being our guest. And we look forward to seeing the next things that you're doing. And I want to tell the listeners again, punchfearinthemouth.com. Check that out as well. Thanks, Derek. All right, take care, Scott. You've been listening to the Business Leadership Series, where we engage with leaders who are making an impact on their worlds and who want to share their knowledge and experience for your personal and professional growth. This interview was designed to inspire you to become the best leader you can be. 